Bharati? Okay. Good morning. Is it still morning? No, I think it's afternoon. No. Okay, good afternoon. We were delayed on the, on the train. Uh, welcome at the Harbor Freedom Day 2012, graciously uh, hosted by uh, you, uh, the Tucker Lab in Enschede. Thank you. Uh, I'm here to uh, show the, the Raspberry Pi. Of course, you all know what that is. It's the, the, the credit card, almost credit card size uh, mini computer from, uh, from England for educational purposes with an uh, ARM processor on it. And uh, it's very popular in the past year because it's uh, the smallest computer that can be called a real PC that you can run Linux on. Uh, but otherwise, as in the physical format is very much like an Arduino uh, embedded controller. So the nice thing about it is that it's, uh, it's, uh, it's cheap and uh, it's open. It's, it's not entirely open because there are some binary blobs for the, uh, the, the video controller mainly. Uh, but it's open in the sense that it's like an Arduino with uh, input-output pins that you can uh, make nice controllers from. Not as many as the Arduino because the, the Raspberry is really focused on, uh, on, uh, on being a, a complete PC with video output. And these days, uh, people want uh, 3D. So there's actually a, a fairly capable uh, 3D uh, video chip uh, in there, to, in the same chip as the, uh, as the ARM processor. It's a Broadcom system on a chip. And uh, uh, it's, it's focused on uh, being just barely able to play high definition video. And so the, the ARM CPU that's integrated in there is not one of the strongest. But, uh, it's probably about equivalent to the Neduino boards, the uh, Arduinos with an, uh, with an ARM processor in it. But if it's for real processing, uh, for, uh, to replace a, a full desktop or a server, you'd normally buy another board with a stronger CPU and, uh, and no or, or, or slow video. But this thing is supposed to do video quite well, and it has a, a, a composite video output, so you can hang it off a, a, a regular old TV. And that's what we've done here, because we try to connect it to the normal output, the uh, H HDMI plug, the high definition plug, which uh, which includes uh, audio. So uh, it's particularly not uh, DVI but HDMI, including audio. And uh, uh, then you get the, the full definition at uh, 1080 pixels uh, vertical. Uh, and the, the Beamer probably can't take that. And I'm not, uh, not sure. I've, uh, I, I got this thing working last night <laughs> after fiddling with it for a week and buying extra stuff to get a picture out of it. So I'm not very experienced with it yet. I heard one of you has one, so Marco, right? You, you, you must be far more experienced with the Raspberry than me. But uh, particularly, uh, I'm going to, to show uh, the programming language uh, that we're working on. And uh, uh, the programming language is in the first place for uh, regular PCs, but it also has uh, uh, an, uh, an ARM backend. And so we're working on, uh, on targeting uh, boards like the Raspberry. And the programming language is called uh, RED. It's been in development for a year and a half now. Eric has seen uh, our previous presentation at Software Freedom Day two weeks ago. And uh, so this is more uh, hardware oriented. Because the nice thing about RED is that it, uh, it uh, has a very broad target. Uh, we want to target uh, high-end hardware and, uh, and low-end hardware all the same. And uh, RED does one trick for that, it's actually two languages. It's a low-level language and a high-level language built on top of it. And the low-level language is uh, very much modeled after C. So it, it basically has the same capabilities as C. So that makes it very suitable to target these, uh, these low-end boards. You can even go lower. You, uh, there is a, an experimental backend for 8-bit uh, Arduino boards. That hasn't been published yet, and it's not finished either. And actually, this ARM, ARM backend isn't finished either, as we'll see. 
but uh, it's very close. It only needs to be debugged. But I got this, art, this Raspberry working uh, last night, and uh, the guy who's programming the, the, the red language is in uh, Montenegro now. He used to be in Paris. Um, and he, he had to order it the normal way. And uh, he ordered it in March or May, and he just got it this week. And I got it this week, but I ordered it uh, the night before. <laughs> because I found, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm so pleased with it that I can, I can do a plug. It's from uh, floors.cc. I think you've got them from there as well. No, no, no. He had uh, a few raspberries uh, in stock. Yeah. And I was very surprised when I found that because nobody can get hold of them. Because uh, it's, uh, it's, it's killed by its own success. No, it's, it's being produced since this year, but nobody can, can get them. It takes uh, half a year to order them uh, or longer. But I just ordered uh, and he had them in stock and I got it uh, a day and a half later. And so I'm very pleased with it. Um, I'll, uh, I'll show starting up again because it was already started up to test uh, the Beamer. Um, I'd like to show the, the little board, but I'll probably do that at the end uh, because uh, it's, it's uh, creating the picture now next to the beamer. So we were hoping to show it here in front, but it has to be next to the beamer now. So I can't really show the board at the same time, but I'll uh, walk to it uh, a few times to, uh, to restart it. Because you can uh, plug an SD card in it. And that has the software, so you can easily start another system by uh, switching the SD card. And this, uh, this SD card has uh, Arch Linux. There are uh, about five very small LEDs on the board. And the first one that lights up is red, and that's for uh, power. And then you get a few blinking green LEDs when it's starting up from the SD card. And when it stops somewhere during that sequence, uh, you sort of know, uh, oh, another one. Oh, th this is very cool. <laughs> you can show it now. On the other hand, now my story that you can't get hold of them uh, falls apart. <laughs> because I'm just handed from the audience uh, another raspberry. <laughs> so I can show it on, uh, on video. This is the board. It's, uh, they say it's credit card size, but it's slightly bigger, and uh, the connectors are protruding, so uh, it's a little white lie, but it's almost credit card size. Um, it's really a, a small computer. It has uh, stuff that you have to buy as extra for the Arduino is on here to make it a real computer. There's a, a network, 100 megabit, uh, USB 2, two ports, uh, here's the uh, very small uh, HDMI video audio plug, uh, the Composite video plug, very classic, that we're using now to get the Beamer in a, a lower resolution, and uh, a standard stereo uh, audio jack. So those are all the old classic uh, connections that you can uh, connect almost anything to. And the HDMI is the modern thing, of course. And uh, we, we started by trying a, a, a VGA adapter from uh, HDMI to uh, VGA. And those are a bit tricky because you're converting from uh, digital to uh, old uh, uh, analog VGA uh, signal. Can you, uh, can you hold it up higher? <laughs> yeah, above point, your head. Uh, I point to a new connector. Has yeah. it been in the picture at all? Uh, now it is. Yeah, okay. I think uh, my head is in the picture, right? Yeah. So it was in the picture just then. Well, again, uh, network, USB, uh, audio, composite video. Uh, here's the uh, header for uh, input-output pins. Uh, I'm not sure if there's a digital analog uh, conversion on there. Maybe I saw something about it, I'm not sure yet. Maybe they're just uh, simple uh, on-off pins. No, eh? just no. Just able. Yeah, so it's much simpler than an Arduino. Yes. It's really focused on the, on the video functionality and being a real computer. And uh, the HDMI again. And here's a, a very small micro USB uh, plug. And that's only for power. 
and that's because um, uh, the, the European Union has said that every uh, phone uh, vendor should uh, now deliver uh, a power input on, on micro USB so that uh, charges become uh, compatible between different phones. So uh, they chose the same uh, power jack, so it's not a real USB port, it's only for uh, power. And if you, if, you, if you buy one and you need uh, uh, the, the power for it, there are a few things to, to watch out for. Uh, it's micro USB and some people are confused uh, that it may be mini USB. So I thought I had a cable but I didn't. And uh, so you have to get a micro USB uh, cable. And uh, the power supply should be rated at at least 700 milliamps at 5 volts uh, direct current. But um, there are lots of messages on the forum uh, that, that may not be enough depending on what you will hang off of it. Uh, so uh, the board itself, if you don't load uh, the USB in the network, is supposed to stay under 300 milliamps, so that's really very little. Just uh, one, or one or two watts, maybe. Welcome. And, uh, uh, but uh, if you start loading the network and, uh, and maybe the video and, uh, and the USB, and it starts uh, drawing more power, and uh, then you're supposed to have a, a 700 milliamp uh, power supply. So if you get a uh, 1 amp or, uh, or maybe bigger, that should be enough. But uh, it may be critical sometimes. So, and the uh, USB ports uh, are supposed to be limited to 140 milliamps. So you can't uh, hang stuff off of it that normally requires a, a powered hub. And you, you would expect that, or at least I did, because uh, if, if the board draws 300 milliamps and uh, you're supposed to feed it 700, then it's logical to think that the rest is for powering the USB, but apparently it isn't. So uh, uh, I, had a, I got an extra powered USB hub uh, to be sure that I don't get any interference. And uh, I've got a, a wireless uh, mouse and keyboard hanging off of it. And it worked without the extra hub, but some people say that it can uh, can be have a disturbance, and indeed it was a bit a uh, bit ficky, fickly, so a bit fickle. Uh, so uh, I'm not sure if that was the power. Maybe it was. So you have to be a bit careful of the power. Well, for the rest, in the middle is just an, uh, the Broadcom chip with the uh, ARM CPU and the uh, 3D video integrated. It gets only a, a little warm. You can uh, put your finger on it, it's no problem. So uh, no cooling required, so uh, no noise. So that's really brilliant as far as I'm concerned. If you want to use it as a real desktop PC. And there's one ex little extra chip for the network. And there's supposed to be a, a Model A that's going to be $10 cheaper. And that, uh, that won't have the, the network. This thing is supposed to be uh, $35, but as always it gets much more expensive because that's without uh, sales tax. And uh, uh, in practice it's, uh, it's, it's like 36 euros in, uh, in Europe. And then the sales tax and then the postage. And then you think, uh, oh, I can hang this on all my equipment. And then you find out that you don't have a micro USB cable. Then you find out that you need a, a stronger power supply than you have on your phone and, uh, and that it would be nice to have a, a wireless keyboard and mouse for the presentation and then you don't get a picture and you don't know why it isn't started and then you don't have an HDMI monitor so you get a new monitor and still no picture. <laughs> and then you find out uh, late last night that uh, uh, it was uh, the, the USB 2 port on, on, on my desktop, my old desktop was somehow unreliable, so the SD card wasn't uh, written correctly. So the, the, the Linux that I put on there simply was corrupt, so the board was working all the time. Um, so, so it's already learning new stuff, learning which, which was the idea of the Raspberry Pi? Educational. Educational, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. true. It has uh, beamed me uh, into uh, the current time uh, because uh, I haven't been into electronics for 15 years or so. I started out in electronics and then I 
moved into more into software because it's much more volatile. And now uh, you always have to solder stuff and then it doesn't work, you don't know why, and uh, it all takes a lot of time. So software is much more fluid. But I always regretted uh, leaving the, the hardware behind. And with these small boards you can get back into the hardware. That's, uh, I think that's very nice. Um, well, I suppose you saw it starting just then. Do you still remember? It was about uh, 10 seconds. Oh, please start it again. Uh... Just yeah. unplug and replug. Did you miss it? Are there a few new people? Yeah, I'll just plug it again. To point the attention to it. Uh, that, so it's faster than uh, a syllable. Yeah. Yeah. This is Arch Linux uh, from an old 2 gigabyte uh, SD card. So it can't be very fast, and this is about uh, 10 seconds to, uh, to a command prompt. So that's really, really good because um, this is a 7 megahertz uh, ARM CPU, but it's uh, about equivalent to a Pentium 300, they say. 300 megahertz Pentium, Pentium 2, I believe they said. So if they say it like that, it's probably more about the floating point uh, performance. But it's really, compared to modern PCs, it's really underpowered. So starting in 10 seconds is really very good. And then uh, classic root user and the password is also root on this Arch Linux. And then you see it using uh, less than uh, 11 uh, megabytes. So that's also a very good performance for uh, this Linux. And that's, you see there, 188 megabyte total memory, and that's a bit mysterious, because it has 256 megabytes of memory, but it is uh, uh, split because it's a shared memory uh, architecture. You probably remember that from uh, Amigas and, uh, and Atari's. It's, uh, the video chip uh, uses the same memory. And you can, you can set the boundary, so it's, uh, by default it's set to use 64 MB for uh, the video. So that is a bit much on a 256 MB card. So you can dial it down to 16 MB if you don't need the video much. So it has 188 left, but uh, for this Linux configuration that's no problem. But on the other hand, there's not really much in Arch Linux because you're supposed to build your own Linux on this base. So this is not uh, really very exciting. But I'm showing it for the, the potential startup speed. Here's the only thing that's really there, the, the root file system with all the classic uh, messy uh, Linux directories. And uh, there's probably lots of stuff to do there in the console. But it doesn't have uh, X11 installed by default. There's nothing uh, with uh, star start X. So uh, I can't go into a, a graphical uh, system here. So I'm only showing this for the startup and shutdown speed. I think the shutting down is also about 10 seconds. So I'll switch to the next, uh, slightly more interesting Linux. Just uh, unplug the power supplies, unplug the uh, SD card. Now goes in a uh, 16 gigabyte, but it's uh, it's formatted with the same uh, two gigabyte uh, partitions. So it, it doesn't have a power on or off knob, it's, it's just... Uh... No, you just uh, plug the power in and out. And so of course, that's the point we had to buy all kinds of stuff this week to get it to work. Because it's a nice cheap board, because nothing's on it. And actually it's not entirely a complete PC, because there's no real-time clock on it. 
So uh, that was too expensive and the board would have become bigger. And uh, if the board is so cheap, then uh, every chip you add makes it a lot more expensive relatively. So uh, there's no real-time clock on it. So you're supposed to always keep it on, which is not really a problem if it uses just a few watts power. Uh, or every time you start it up, you have to set the time uh, yourself. And uh, of course, if you're running Linux, then you can try to set the time from the internet. So you can see that these Linuxes are a bit uh, modified. It says something starting NTP server. It's trying to get the time from the internet, specifically because there's no uh, no clock on it. So this is uh, this is Debian for uh, ARM CPU, and especially for this uh, Raspberry board. So this is called a Raspbian Debian Raspbian Wheezy, I believe. Yes, based on Debian SID, I believe. And uh, that takes longer to start. And here the standard user is uh, Pi, and the standard password is uh, Raspberry. Uh, Debian is already a bit noisier than, uh, than Arch Linux. And here you see it using 60 megabytes after startup. So it's already running more stuff and you see it running an, an SSH uh, server. So if you don't connect a monitor you can uh, SSH into it over the network. So it's all very standard Linux stuff. So that's why this board is so uh, popular. It's just you really, really get uh, standard Linux. But it's, uh, it's, very, uh, it's a very small board to run Linux. We'll see that it's a bit uh, underpowered for it. Or uh, in, uh, in my view, the software is, uh, is terribly bloated. So I don't know if you've ever heard of it, but uh, I've been doing the syllable uh, operating system project for the past 10 years. And uh, it's a bit frustrating right now because we know that uh, a syllable would be perfect for these boards because it blows away Linux on, on Intel CPUs and performance. But the problem is we only, have, we, we only ever developed it for Intel. So uh, we'd have to port it to ARM and uh, then it would blow away these Linuxes, but uh, we don't have the manpower uh, at the moment to port it to ARM, so that's quite frustrating. But uh, we'll see that if you have a really lean Linux, that it, uh, it, uh, it runs uh, acceptably. So this uh, 60 megabytes is already very good memory usage, so they, they've really uh, cut it down uh, for, for this uh, Raspberry board. I see they've also uh, Dillo uh, aboard. Yeah, there's uh, the, all the small, the, 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 what everyone has been using on small desktop PCs, old desktop PCs, to, uh, to, to keep using it. The, uh, the, that was a, a very small scene that wanted to keep using old PCs. And all those configurations and Linuxes, optimized Linuxes, and all those small uh, application programs are now absolutely necessary to run these kinds of boards. Originally, uh, uh, the Raspberry Foundation in England planned to use uh, Ubuntu. And I thought, oh, that's not going to work. But somehow they made it run uh, Ubuntu. And then they were uh, screwed over, uh, more or less, because uh, the new uh, Ubuntu version has moved to bigger ARM CPUs. So Ubuntu doesn't support this uh, ARM v6 architecture anymore. So they wanted to, to deliver it with Ubuntu, but uh, Ubuntu screwed it. But in the, uh, in the Ubuntu version, did it run acceptably? I don't think so. I don't believe so. <laughs> I don't see how it could. Well, we'll see how this runs, and this is much more uh, optimal than, uh, than Ubuntu. Uh, here we do have uh, X11 with an LXDE uh, desktop. So that's one of the, the most efficient desktops that people are running on very old desktop PCs. And that's now uh, quite uh, suitable for a Raspberry. Let's see how we're doing on resolution. Oh, it still looks uh, usable. It's widescreen, isn't it? Yeah. So it's, uh, it's all the, the nice thing. It's a very old, very small underpowered board, but at the same time very modern. It's all uh, widescreen resolutions, full HD. So uh, it's really not that bad. Um, what is idle? 
Uh, it's a Python uh, IDE, integrated oh. development environment. So uh, it comes with Python and with a squeak, sp the small talk environment, and a scratch. And I'm not sure, is scratch also built on small talk? Uh, yeah, no, uh, on, on squeak or on small talk. Um, yeah, squeak is built on small talk, and I think scratch is built on squeak. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so it's a bit, uh, bit of a small talk system, and you get Python in, Python in there. And of course, what we want to do is, uh, is uh, blow that away with the, the new red programming language. But uh, we'll have uh, some more work to do before we can do that. Yeah. Small question for those of us that have no idea what small talk is. <laughs> <laughs> I was uh, just thinking: Am I here in a, in a real hardware crowd, or am I also <laughs> in an overlapping software crowd? Or Smalltalk is uh, one of the classic programming languages. Uh, it's from, um, do you know Xerox Park? Nope. The, uh, the academic labs, in the commercial academic labs in America in the 70s, where a lot uh, of stuff mm -hmm. was there. They yeah. developed the laser printer, what Xerox made its money on. Uh, but they also developed a lot of computer stuff. They, uh, they, they went with uh, the idea of uh, Doug Engelbart. Doug Engelbart in the late 60s or, or even early 60s already invented uh, monitors and mouse and, uh, and everything. And uh, Xerox Park really made it usable in the 70s. And then uh, Steve Jobs came to visit. The GUI was from Xerox or not? Yeah, yeah. yeah but it's really the idea was mm -hmm. to use icons and move them with a, a pointer. Mm -hmm. That idea was from Doug Engelbart in the, in the late 50s, uh, 60s. But Xerox really... Uh, they sort of productized it in a weird way that Xerox uh, didn't produce it. But they, they knew that they wanted that technology. And then Steve Jobs came to visit. So every time people say, oh, Steve Jobs invented this and he invented that. No, he saw it when he visited Xerox Park in the late 70s. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they had uh, the first uh, really usable uh, computers with Windows systems there. But the basic idea was from Doug Engelbart, and he got that from uh, the military where he worked in the 50s, uh, where they had uh, radar screens with the, the, the green beam and the blips, you know. Mm -hmm. There he got the idea that you should eventually set everyone behind uh, a monitor and, and, and not send in batch cards to a mainframe to be, to, and get them back the next week, but that you should be uh, behind an interactive monitor. And that was a really strange idea, except that you, they were simply already doing that in the military with, uh, with the radar systems. So he transferred that idea to, uh, to computers, and uh, then Xerox Park made it uh, into really good products in the 70s, but only internally, on very expensive lab machines. And uh, they had all this hardware, and uh, uh, they had uh, these first really usable Windows systems on it that Steve Jobs just copied. And copied wrong, by the way, but that's another story. And uh, uh, as, uh, as programming language on top of that, they, uh, they developed Smalltalk. And Smalltalk is one of the very early, very dynamic programming languages. And it's one of the first object-oriented programming languages. The, the wrong copying, wasn't that done by Bill Gates instead of Steve Jobs? I <coughs> all did, but, but Steve Jobs too. The, the, the double click on the mouse is a, is a historical mistake. Uh, overlapping windows is a historical mistake. That's, a, that's what uh, Steve Jobs and uh, come the, uh, the, user, the Mac user interface guy, what's his name? Wozniak? No, the user interface guy from the Mac. Uh, maybe I'll find yeah. his name later. Too much of a history lesson yeah. for just a small <laughs> talk. Well, you asked. Small talk. Yeah. Since you asked. So that's small talk. It's a very early uh, dynamic object-oriented programming language. It's almost the first object-oriented, but not really, because that was invented by Simula in 65. The, the 100 laptop per child uh, initially yeah. would be a small talk operating system. Small talk was very much developed by Alan Kay who worked for Atari and Apple later, and, uh, and, and, L, uh, and Alan Kay is still doing a small talk, and they built this squeak multimedia environment on it the past 10, maybe 15 years to make it modern. And uh, squeak is, uh, uh, Scratch is really a, uh, an 
educational like uh, special programming language for making games, 2D games and such very quickly. To, uh, to uh, set Alan Kay, he is the guy who really invented the tablet PC, not Steve Jobs. Yeah. In 1969, uh, by the way. And he's credited for the term object oriented. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's credited for that word. Yeah, because yeah. Simula was really, they thought it was about simulation. But it was actually object oriented in a compiled way. And then Smalltalk became object oriented much more dynamically, uh, really like modern languages. Uh, as an example, here's a, a fairly well known <coughs> Midori web browser based on WebKit, but uh, lighter weight than other WebKit browsers. And uh, then you can uh, get an idea of the performance of the machine. Uh, starts reasonably fast, but it's all a bit sluggish. This is the website of our uh, operating system project. Yeah, we do have a connection. See, it all takes quite a while, and this is a normal network connection. So it's more about uh, the performance of the processor. Is it, uh, is it the beamer which makes it uh, the yeah. contrast not... Uh... Yeah, the, the, the resolution is quite high, so it's probably on the limit of the beamer. Hmm? If, you, if you scroll through it uh, page by page, it's, uh, it's fairly acceptable. But if you, uh, if you scroll through it uh, with the bar, it becomes slower. And this is a rather efficient website. But could you, for example, play YouTube movies? I haven't tried that yet. But we could try to get some, uh, some sound. There's no flash on it, if I recall correctly. Oh, yeah, right. It can be flash on it. It's true. Yeah, but uh, HTML5 is... Uh... Yeah, you could, you could scour YouTube for uh, some, uh, some uh, non-flash videos. Oh, what's this? That's odd. You can do that. Yeah, it's a font. <laughs> I guess it's, it's a joke of Tom Homer. Uh... No, yesterday it was all right. They changed the font to one that isn't available. Just today or... Uh... I guess. That's uh, because uh, t tonight it was all right. <laughs> Tonight's all right, all right. Uh, I don't know what happened to OS News, but uh, maybe I typed something wrong here? I don't think so. I have no idea what happened here. But you see that uh, with, with uh, nice so somewhat larger web style sites, it starts to get really sluggish. But uh, if you go to News, The page you see now is uh, Japanese or Chinese. Oh, oh sorry, I, I meant uh, the news. news link. Oh, sorry. the link on the page. Oh, yeah, we have it so often. Yeah, it's all Chinese. Is it always news? And then is it hacked or something? And, uh, or, or it's hacked, or you have some very strange proxy here. Oh, so. And if you wait, wait, wait. Als ik weer wel naar het toekerlijf ga. Oh ja, ja, nee, nou ja. Kijk, gaan we anders eens naar het toekerlijf. Punt NL, hè? Ja. Dus die hangt uit bij de LAB.